Revelation chapter 16, <clears throat> and we left off at verse 13. So at this point, we're seeing a satanic trinity over here. So we see the false prophet, we see the Antichrist, and then we see the great red dragon, Satan. So I'll just put this one to distinguish. Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet, because he's a religious figure, we're going to give him a gown. Okay. Anyways, with this cutesy little poor little drawing, we see the satanic trinity over here. And what they're going to cast off is they're going to cast off devils out of their mouths, actually. And these devils that we're going to be looking at, it shows something interesting about the origin of demons. A lot of people have these theories about where demons come from. So this is your pastor's theory on it because a lot of people try to figure it out. Now, let's clear off the false notions first, okay? A lot of people thought and they teach that when the angels fell with Lucifer, that they transformed into demons. That's the most popular teaching and the traditional among Christian churches. Now, Dr. Ruckman believes differently because he says that throughout the entire Bible, angels are listed as men, whereas devils are unclean animals. Yeah. So let's look at the passage over here. Verse 13, and I saw three, what? Unclean spirits, so those are devils, like frogs, their animals, come out of the mouth of the dragon. So it comes out of the mouth of Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So this picture is self-explanatory over here. So that's how these devils came out of the satanic trinity. And these devils are not men. You'll notice that they're likened to unclean animals. And you're going to see the same thing if you look at Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. Revelation chapter 18, and we'll read verse 2. Notice over here that unclean spirits or devils are likened to animals. We'll see that they're likened to animals again. The Bible says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and what? Hateful. Hateful bird. So notice right here that they're likened to unclean animals or animals. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And we'll see what the Bible says over here concerning about the parable of the seeds being sown. So some of you have heard the story about the sower sowing seeds, that parable told by Jesus. And then he says that when the seeds landed on the first ground, the fowls of the air, the bird came and devoured up the seeds. And Jesus explains who those fowls are. So first of all, let's read verse 4. And he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now who are those fowls? Look at Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, that's Satan, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So notice that Satan was pictured with those birds who ate up the seeds. And actually, if you look at Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8, the verse shows over there that it's actually Satan. They'll give the name Satan over here. Let's return to our main text at Revelation chapter 16. You'll notice that also the devils, when they were cast off of the maniac of Gadara at Mark chapter 5, they wanted to go into the unclean pigs. They want to go inside the unclean pigs. So devils, they're closely connected. They're likened to unclean animals. That's what you're going to realize. That explains the monstrosity. See, because in Revelation, remember when we looked at Revelation chapter 9 about those demonic beings that came out of hell at Revelation 9? 
We also looked at Revelation chapter, oh, I forgot the chapter, but I think it's, yeah, it's chapter 9 as well, where you see these kings of the east. Your pastor talked about it last Revelation study, and they had these monstrosity figures. But the monstrosity figures, you'll notice, is animal parts. That creates the demonic feature. That's the idea. So it shows the de demonic appearances is the animal parts. That's why we say devils, it's more accurate to show them with unclean animals or animals more than men. If devils are going to be likened to men in any way or form, such as, for example, when they demon possess a person, you'll notice that the man doesn't act like a man. He acts like a monstrous or an animalistic part yeah. of him, which is very interesting. So that's why it seems more accurate to say that devils, they were not fallen angels. They were not fallen angels because angels are likened to men. And some people might teach it this way. Some people might teach, well, they were originally fallen angels as men, but then they transformed into demons, which is also popular. I could be open to that because Satan, he's a beautiful being, Lucifer, but then he can transform himself, see? He, like a serpent at Genesis chapter 3 or other, or other places in your Bible. But there's a prob uh, there, there are also problems with that teaching too. Because one, some Bible believers teach that Genesis 3, where it's the serpent, it's just a title. It's not literally an animal. A second thing is this. A second thing is, how do you explain Genesis 6, where they were already fallen, those angels, they sided with Satan, but they were able to mate with the humans. See, so it shows that they were a man part. They were a man part. And actually, if you uh, read Genesis chapter 6, it really shows that, that they were like men who were meeting with the daughters, the human daughters. That's the idea. So it shows more and more that fallen angels are literally what? Fallen angels. They're men. Whereas demons, they're unclean animals. That seems a better rationale. So if that's the case, then the question is, then where did these devils, how were they birthed if they were not originally fallen angels? Well, you see over here how they were born at verse 13. Three unclean spirits, devils like frogs, how were they birthed? Come out of the mouth of the dragon, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Now, I think there are several keys here, which we're going to get into some deep stuff and something very eye-opening. It's going to be pretty eye-opening. Now, these demons, how they were born was from the devil himself. Now, look at this. Devil and what? Devil. Devils. See that? It's as if they came from him. They're a part of him. That makes a lot of sense. Here's another very interesting thing. They're called unclean spirits. You see that? Spirit. Now, a spirit is something that's within you. It's something that's within you. That's why man has body, soul, and spirit. God Almighty has the Holy Spirit. Spirit, it, uh, it relates to air. Uh, the Bible is, likens that to wind at the book of John. Chapter 3, and it's something that you cannot see. It's invisible. So it's something that has to do with breath or something that has to do with energy inside you. That's the idea. So that's why a lot of Jehovah Witnesses, they don't believe the Holy Spirit is a person. See that? They believe that he's just a force, an energy, because that's what a spirit is. But God, he's unique from everybody. God, what he uh, when he has those three parts operating, he can have them as persons, and he's fully God. So God is such a unique total being. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ, when he's the son of God and he's a human on earth, the Bible shows that he has his own spirit, human spirit that's distinguished from the Holy Spirit. 
So how do you explain that part? Why? Because it's God. God can do that. He's very amazing. But here's the point over here. If everyone understands that spirit is something that inward part, and I'm going to use those uh, non-technical terms, so to speak, so it's like that energy, that force, so to speak, or that uh, wind, that breath inside you. The Bible shows that Christians, that when we live in something that's clean and Holy Spirit, something spiritual, what happens? Okay, so let me draw this out so people can better understand, so that there's no confusion. So this, wow, okay. So this human being over here, he has something inside him called a spirit, okay? Breath. Wind, air, energy, something animate, whatever you want to call it. Now, this spirit that's inside him, the Bible says that when you got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit entered inside you. And the Sp Holy Spirit ain't just some energy or force. He's more than that. He's actually a person, God himself. So I just wanted to clarify that before some trolls out there try to catch me and then post a video on me. Usually they always do that. But aside from that, the Holy Spirit, he's inside a person. When he's inside this particular human person, when this person starts to do something that's righteous, holy, something that's good works, what happens? It grows more. It feeds him. If the Holy, uh, if not the Holy Spirit, if the person starves in good works, rarely does good works, starves the spiritual nature within him, correct? Yeah. Now, why can't it be the same way with the devil? Mm. When you increase more, the works of the flesh, they're still going in you, yeah. you understand. So this is not, so I don't want people to get confused this has nothing to do with your spiritual nature. It's your fleshly nature. A Christian is undeniable, have two parts. Not one part or the other, it's two parts. Spiritual nature and a fleshly nature. A fleshly nature, there's nothing holy or pure about it. The fleshly nature is wicked. And Paul says, whatsoever is in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So this fleshly nature, when it creases in sin, what happens is this, is that that demonic spirit, see, it's feeding, when you're doing bad works, what kind of spirit is it feeding then? It's feeding the demonic spirit. That's why a lot of people don't believe in this, but I believe it's very important that you know this doctrine that way you can better understand spiritual warfare. Be more alert for the devil and take spiritual nature growth more seriously. And that is that a saved Christian can be demon-possessed. That is very, very possible. There are some people who deny this and even get mad at me on this, but no, you got to realize this is real biblical truth. The common argument people will say is, how can... A demonic spirit be inside with the Holy Spirit because God cannot dwell with Satan. That's the common argument. That's why they deny it. But there's a simple answer to that. You got to realize that when God has the Holy Spirit inside you, he is not a part of the fleshly nature. He divides it. There's a dividing line. If you look at uh, Colossians, let's, uh, I don't have too much time to cover this, but I'm going to cover it. That way people can better understand. Go to Colossians chapter 2. He circumcised you. What is circumcision? It's a dividing, cutting off, separation. He circumcised you, the spiritual nature from your fleshly nature, your body of sins. Amen. Circumcised from what? The whole body, the entire body of sin, flesh. So nothing fleshly is a part 
of the spiritual nature. It's cut off. Circumcised what is circumcised this? Cut off. Cut off. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Look how the Bible explains this. Let Scripture interpret Scripture Amen. rather than people's emotions and feelings. Because if you keep letting the emotion and imagination run, I can't picture God with Satan. That's so blasphemous. See, what you're doing is that you're using your fleshly imagination, yeah. fleshly emotions of that. You can't go by how your flesh feels. You've got to go by the Bible. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Verse 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. See, the body, your flesh is separated by the what? Circumcision of Christ. And is this spiritual? Yes, because read verse 11 again. He circumcised with what kind of circumcision? Circumcision made without hands. See, that's an invisible spiritual circumcision. It's not a normal physical body circumcision like we get today. Some people actually practice fleshly circumcision today at some parts. But God's saying, no, this is a different circumcision. It's a spiritual circumcision that causes that dividing line from the flesh. So see the Holy Spirit, see, he's in that division. Can Satan, I mean, this is a very easy question. If your flesh is capable of doing the worst kind of sins like a lost person, why doesn't that give Satan the authority or the ability to use that? Because Paul says, in my flesh is nothing, nothing, listen up now, nothing good. So if it's nothing good, guess what? Satan can get in there because it's filled with sin, wickedness, and evil. Satan can get in that. He loves that. That's, those are the kind of people he get inside. But look at a lot of verses, uh, not verses, <laughs> look at a lot of verses in your Bible that talk about how Satan possesses people. You got to use your head. How does demon possession start? How does this start? It's not like Satan's like randomly, okay, I go inside you. No, he can't do that. He does, it begins with sin, when you sin in your flesh. And when you sin in your flesh, what happens is this, see? You're what? You're weakening that spiritual nature more and more. And you're growing that fleshly nature even more. And what's, so hap what's happening even more is that you're searing that conscience and then because you're searing that, that's why you're so much lost inside the flesh that your spiritual nature is hardly operating. And then because you delve so deep into sin, it's now gotten to a point where you're not practically human anymore. And people are wondering, man, is this guy a saved Christian or not? And they can hardly tell what you are anymore. And you're living like the devil. You're living like the devil. What do we mean by that? See, it's to a point where you're no longer a human, but you're acting like the devil now. Why? Because Satan, he gets on you. Have you ever been, for example, anger? When you're into anger and then you're used, so used to that habit, what happens? What happens is when you get into anger and you lose control of it, then that anger increases even more where you're so lost in your anger that you're not even thinking straight. And then when you're done, you're like, what did I just do just now? That wasn't me. That wasn't me anymore. You know what that was? That was giving permission for Satan to possess you. That was demon possession now. That's what happened. Especially with alcohol. That's why, we, we, that's why we're so strong against alcohol and even yoga. Why? Because you're losing yourself. Yeah. You're giving permission for something else to come inside you. So that's why we're very strong about, that's why God says, be sober, be vigilant. He says, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans chapter 12. He wants that thing operating. He wants that thing operating. Because why? It's just giving Satan permission to possess you. Look at Simon Peter. Simon Peter, he says, not so, Lord, and then Jesus called him Satan. A disciple, Simon Peter? 
How did that happen? See, so Satan, he can possess a say believer, like Simon Peter, for example. If he can get Peter, he sure can get you. Amen. That's why you got to be very alert of spiritual warfare and be careful. So by believing in this notion then, this makes sense about the origin of devils then. Because think about it, is that the more you do bad, more you do good works, the more the Holy Spirit grows in you, right? The more you do bad works, what happens? The more this guy is going to grow. And then some devil is going to come out of you. So devils, how are they birthed? How are they born? From sin. From something demonic and wicked inside. That's why it's not just Satan himself, you'll notice the false prophet and the Antichrist are able to create and birth out that devil. Which is why it's very interesting. Some people say that devils, here's a different theory, that devils, how they are born is that they are the spirits of the people who died out in the flood before Adam. That's what they teach. These are these unclean spirits that were born from the sinners before Adam. How it can, now, this is why, how I think is you can harmonize all three theories. Okay, can't fall into angels, uh, they became devils. Or the second one, are devils born from the spirits of the, un, of the, uh, the unsaved dead before? Or are they born from Satan himself? I think there's a harmony with all three. Basically, is that they can be they can come from fallen angels. Why? Because of that wicked, demonic nature inside. Same thing with Satan. And not only that, they can come from the spirits of unclean sinners beforehand. Why? Because that's how devils are birthed, or you feed that demonic nature more through your sin. So I think that there's a harmonizing with all three over here. There's a harmonizing with all three. Because look at the term spirit. That's the key. Devils are likened to what? Spirit. You got to think about spirit. How is the spirit born? How is the spirit grown and formed? See, that's the thing. It's all by the actions of what you did in your life. And it creates that spirit inside you. But that also makes sense with a lot of other passages where the Bible talks about, you know, you having the spirit of joy. What does that mean? That there's a separate spirit called joy? Well, it's not... In a literal sense, there's a separate spirit. Hey, my name is Joy. That's not the idea. But there's something you create inside you. Yeah. See, that's the idea. That's the idea. You ever heard about people saying, man, he's got a good spirit? You ever heard about that? What's that referring to? Because of what that person did. And then it creates that inner atmosphere. That inner glow. That inner power. See, that inner energy. That that's the idea.